Hello everyone, and uh, today is uh, for a special occasion. I thought of a proof that will uh, indicate, vindicate my belief that aliens are not possible. Alien lives or civilizations uh, are in our universe are not possible. So it won't come to our Earth. As a popular beliefs uh, take it, it's not like that. And this morning, I watched a, a videotape uh, from the uh, YouTube. The title is "Is There Life uh, in the Universe Beside the Earth, or Is That Earth Unique uh, in Human?" civilization in the universe or something to that effect. The panel includes uh, some experts and uh, uh, most prominent probably is a uh, uh, Arizona professor, the origin uh, project uh, director, uh, Lawrence Cross and some others. And uh, most of them, it's a five or six of them, and most of them are, are thinking that uh, alien lives are possible. Uh, so that's uh, like uh, Stephen Hawking is uh, uh, leading the role of searching for human life out of space, and NASA is doing that too uh, nowadays. And so most of the panelists, uh, four of them, believe that uh, alien life is quite possible. Uh, only one person is against it, saying that uh, Earth is unique because of its uh, uh, evolution, how the Earth is formed, the materials are different, the atmosphere is different, things like that, but mostly from a geological point of view. And uh, I, well, after watch that, I thought about that for a while. And, uh, you know, I have been uh, thinking about this question for a long time. Uh, because according to my theory, my philosophy in psychology, it shouldn't be uh, any alien life or life or civilization. They might be. Uh, some li uh, early life forms, but it couldn't survive for this long. And uh, it, it, the water is possible in some other places uh, outside of Earth, but to grow into civilization, uh, to have humans, it's, to me, it's uh, impossible, according to my theory, the, my philosophy. So I... I suddenly have an idea that how I can give more proof on this. Uh, if it's not final, I think it basically will seal the answer. Well, but anyway, let you be the judge, see if I'm correct. Uh, if you know a little bit more about this instinctology system, you will notice that in this system, there's a concept that was called transcend, transcendental number, okay? It's like the idea in Emil Kant's uh, theory, uh, he has a transcendental experience or transcendental ideology or whatever. Uh, he used that word a lot, but in this uh, mathematics we have, we also have this concept of transcendental number. All right, uh, okay, let me write it here, just in case you are not familiar with it. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, good. Transcendental number. What are transcendental numbers? It's like a, uh, mostly it's a pi, or give you a clue example, like a pi, 
no, so like uh, the natural number, uh, the natural number uh, log, log it's uh, base e. Yeah, that's this is the uh, three point one four one five nine two six. This one is uh, two seven. One eight two eight blah blah blah. Okay, so that's basically the value of these numbers. Uh, these numbers are used quite widely. Well, there's more to prove it. It's very difficult, I know, but there's a lot more than that. And uh, so far, people just mathematicians discovered some of it, not all of it, but they they know there is tons of it. Uh, if you look more, you will see it. But proving them are very difficult. Uh, well, my next point is these numbers. Uh, one of the use is to apply to uh, the rate of growth, or the inheritance, uh, or the uh, complex interest in financial stuff. In the let's say uh, interests. You have a mortgage, you have loans, uh, each monthly, uh, how the loans will grow. If you don't pay the uh, monthly, they, the, the rates will include the interest, then it goes up, how it goes up. Uh, one of the numbers like this one, E, is used like uh, the Austrian uh, monk, or also philosopher uh, Mandel, used it uh, to, to see the chromosome uh, in beans, uh, when he tested for many generations how to pass their uh, chromosomes to the later generation. Uh, he is the father of genet genetics, uh, okay, according to history. Uh, but he, well, the thing is that his invention, when he did it, several years, nobody ever noticed, okay. I hope that in centrality won't go that way. That's a very bad, but very sad. But anyway, truth is the truth. It will last a long time. Eventually, it will be discovered. That's a fact, okay? Uh, okay, now I'm going to give an example of how things grow, or the new things uh, created according to the number, the law of uh, uh, natural numbers. I want to give uh, an example. A short one I found from the internet. Let's say we have a plate with 250, 250 bacteria there. 250, all right? Uh, you want to know after 36 hours how many it will self, they will self generate into how many, okay? That's a question. We know the rate. The generation of um, roughly about 4.6%, all right, in a day, okay? If you know that, the formula should be the total number equals the total, okay? See, that's a base uh, uh, to the, to the uh, power of, of the rate times uh, E. It should go like that, okay? Okay, so for this one, for total we have, we don't know, okay? For the population we know it's 250, right? Okay, we know this, all right? You can see it? Okay, good. The rate is 4.6%, uh, so it's 0 0.046, right? Okay, and uh, this E is, we know the number, right? Okay. So this one uh, times uh, oh, let me see. Okay, time time. Uh, Thirty six hours is uh, because this uh, four point six is a by day. And so it should be uh, uh, how many days? One point five. Okay, one point five. One point five days. All right. Okay. It should go by that. Oh, I made a mistake here. The rate should be, uh, all right, like this, right? 
Okay, it should be uh, base here, all right? Okay. Okay, so the calculation total is uh, something like uh, eventually come to uh, 267.8, blah, 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 something like that. 267 or 68 uh, uh, bacteria after 36 hours. That, that's uh, how they grow, okay? So growth is like that, uh, following the law of uh, natural numbers, all right? Okay, this is an example. Now let's come to the, to the proof, the direct one I was thinking. This just an example, okay? All right. If I draw things like this, I'm not very good at this one. Let me try another one. Oh, not very good. What's going on? Okay, clear one. Yeah, everybody is like that. All right, but anyway, can you see it clearly? Yeah, you roughly can see it. What is there? What is this? Uh, if you live on the beach, uh, close to seashore, uh, like I'm doing, near Atlantic or anywhere else, you know, you think it's a shell, right? It's a shape of shell. But if you like uh, uh, to watch stars, like astronomy, uh, you will notice this is shape of a lot of galaxies, like ours, right? The arms of the shape of the galaxy, it goes like this. But this has a, a mathematic in it. It's especially about this, uh, natural numbers. But here, I'm going to stress the point of circle, all right? So now, when our galaxy is a form, Let's say our Earth, our Earth is formed. It must have a core first. So the middle point is the core. The core of, or the center of that uh, future globe, the ball, right? The, the cubic, uh, the, the ball shape. Later on, it formed that. But it started from the center. It has a center first. From the center, it goes around, around, a lot of stuff goes around that, like a cloud, right? The star cloud, like uh, Emil Kant predicted with the Laplace, and it goes like that, turn around and around, eventually it matters, condense, okay? In a form of ball, eventually it's our Earth, right? That's uh, basically what we believe. The air, the, the like uh, a lot of uh, universal stuff uh, will go around and around like a gas, mixture of gas, eventually condense to the point to form a material matter, all right? Eventually it's our Earth, it's like that. Uh, either our star or galaxy or sun, everything uh, is formed that way, okay? Okay, now come to the crucial point. What I'm aiming at, all right? Remember, when the Earth is formed, it starts from the middle, right? That's a center, the center of future ball. But the ball, the Earth is a round shape, okay? Everything will gradually gather around this shape. When they move, turn around. But what decides that movement? How do you know the future? How big the ball is? The, or the planet or the um, stars will be? Okay, it depends 
from the center to outside. It depends on this. It's a radius, right? Depends on how far this radius will go, right? And it will go on and the longer, longer, grow longer. So the ball will become bigger and bigger eventually, right? Okay. Eventually, it condensed to a certain size. Okay. Everything formed in our universe is like this, as big as the galaxies, as small as uh, like our solar system, the uh, sun or the planets, the smaller one as our planets, like our Earth or Moon or everything else, is formed this way. So everything we see in the universe is a round ball with the shape of a round, a sphere, right? Do you see any other uh, geometrical shapes like a triangle or rectangle or uh, a sphere, uh, other shapes? No. Only spheres. Only the shape of the balls. Okay. So if everything is a shape, the, this circular shape, then everything goes by the center and uh, with the radius expanding, then the point is the eventually the shape, the cir circumference, circumference of the ball is against the radius, there's a certain ratio. That ratio, if it times two, will be diameters, right? Goes to from the one end to the other. So it's a pi. All right? We know pi is three point blah, 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 blah. It goes along forever. The point is, as a transcendental number, and it will never repeat itself. Uh, nowadays, the computer has calculated uh, many, many hours, um, uh, thousands of uh, millions of uh, digits, uh, haven't found, uh, they haven't found any re re repeated pattern, repetition of it. Okay, I heard a report about that, and I think that's true too. So, for transcendental numbers, remember, the point is, they never repeat. You cannot repeat. Okay, here's the significance. If a ball, the size of it, never repeat, it means the conditions, whatever surrounding it, or whatever inside, is unique by itself either temperature-wise or the uh, elements or whatever it contains or the relationship with other planets, other uh, uh, astronomical uh, stuff, or either uh, it's comets or some other uh, stuff, whatever it is, as long as it's matter, it's unique, remember. Because this number is unique, so the ratio is unique, so all balls are unique. That's the point. Okay? So, by this, I mean the Earth we have, the conditions, now it develops in the civilization, evolves, uh, evolutes, uh, come to civilization, it's unique. It cannot be any alien life, life come to us. It's impossible. So we are the unique one, all right? And in addition to the absolutes uh, from our this in psychology system. So in other words, thousands of years ago, when religion claims we are the center of the universe. That was denied by later philosophy and the science because they believe people are just uh, a little a lump sum of uh, uh, cosmetic, uh, cosmological dust 
in a un, uh, a believing corner of the universe or galaxy, whatever. They come, this judgment is from the physical side. Physical matter wise, we body are we bodies are not different from animal. Okay? But now in psychology tells you we have the absolute in here. We have two small ones. There's at our background, there's a big one. So three absolutes. From this point of view, we are unique. There's nothing in the universe will be like human being because of this discovery. Okay? So from that point of view, we can as a postulate as a theorem. You can say no other civilizations, no life will grow into human civilizations are possible. You might find some rivers or waters or some even maybe dead plants in other uh, galaxies or stars or planets that's possible. But growing the human a civilization come to get us or let us see their life, it's impossible because our Earth is unique. The uniqueness, it only fits for growth of civilization. No other planets, no other uh, cosmological uh, condition will be fit for civilization to grow. That's our conclusion. That's my conclusion from this theory of instinctology. I want you to ponder about it. Well, it's a false, it's a falsifiable, okay? According to Popper, if you bring aliens here, I'm wrong. But, well, there's a catch. I may have a paradigm shift. I might have the protective belt, all right? I have a core that is the absolute. But anyway, if we can bring aliens here, that's a big victory for you. I, I need to re-examine my system because it's a, a big defect at least. Okay, so, but anyway, I, I tell you why I'm thinking uh, this way and gave you the proof. And I think and uh, I'm right, all right? Okay, so far for this topic, I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.